Hey guys, this is Daniel, and welcome back to the third part of our character rigging tutorial. Uh, we have here our character and our rig, and I realized that I forgot something um, with the armature rig in my last part. So we fixed most of the areas, but there is one that we forgot, and that's around the hips. You don't see it because of the skirt, but uh, we we'll need to fix a few things. So you see when you move the leg like this. Um, let's activate this. You get some bad deformations here, and hmm, actually, I think we should just separate the skirt into a separate object for now, so that it won't get into our way. So let's just hide it here, and now let's try to fix the weight paint. So basically, the issue here is that we want um, this part not to be deformed by um, the legs. So let's remove it from both left and right sides. And this usually is the easiest fix to, to do it. Uh, of course you can smooth things out here, but I really don't think that it's worth it too much um, from experience because um, well, on, on one side you won't see it anyways, but other, other than that uh, the the smooth transition only gives you word transformations, so I won't bother with that. The only place where I want to make a few improvements is over here, maybe. So let's switch to the right view. Um, basically, I need to smoothen this area a little bit. Let's make sure that we are in X mirror mode just so that we won't run into troubles regarding that. Um, looks good, so we'll also have to do that from the, the opposing group, the hip bone, so works the same way. So in this situation I will accidentally have to add weight to this other part, but I'll undo that later. Or actually it's uh, isn't it part of the cloth? So it doesn't matter actually, but but still, let's make sure that we don't get any errors. Um, all right, so now it's a bit smoother. We still lose some volume, but that's not too big of a deal as we usually shouldn't be seeing too much of that anyways in our design. Uh, so to finish it off, let's just fix um, the few issues that we had here. This part I want to remove from the hip group and then we might have to clean up a little bit. Oh, by the way, I noticed that we get some... that this group has a little bit of weight over here as well. We should remove that. So now it's, uh, it's, still, it's still interfering here. It's hard to tell, but sometimes it hides in here somewhere. <coughs> okay, I guess I'm happy with the result. You can go back to object mode, unhide the object, and join them back together, and we should not have any issues. Perfect, let's move on then. So, we have so far everything done with the armature system. We need to do the cloth, however, and the issue is that using uh, using armature systems, you get uh, lots of sliding between the parts as they're separate, and the better way is to use a deformer mesh because they keep everything to together. And I want to give you a quick demonstration uh, because that explains you how it actually works. <coughs> so this is our complex object, just a representation of it. I add a couple of details here and there. And then I'll use a cube as our deform mesh. And I'll also show you a common issue quickly. If I add the modifier here, uh, mesh deform, of course I want to have the cube as our deformer. And I bind it with a precision of 4. Um, see, it works great, except for everything that's outside of the box, which will be except, uh, deformed in no way at all. So make sure that whatever you deform is definitely smaller and completely inside of your cage. So just to see it better, I switched that to wireframe. 
uh, we need to unbind that and rebind it and now everything is perfectly fine in comparison if I had used an armature system let's quickly get something done here and I parent that with automated weights here um, as soon as I rotate that we should get yeah some some sliding here you see how these parts are now not even touching anymore while here they totally intersect and here they don't even touch the sphere anymore while here they were actually attached to it so we get lots of issues with armatures that's why for the cloth which is more complex we use the deform mesh so the deform mesh needs to have a similar shape of course I have created it already so this is my deformer mesh uh, I'll change the shading quickly um, but you need to create something for yourself in my case I just copied the body and extruded a bit for the skirt and made it smooth a bit I used the shrink and fatten tool to you know add volume to it and fix the intersecting areas but as I said just make sure that you have everything inside of this everything that's outside will not be transformed anymore so um, let's bind them together I would say so we have already the modifier set up we only need to select the deformer here I like to use a precision of 4 because the higher you go the longer it will take and really it takes forever if you go just one number too high so really save before you do it because uh, you might crash your yeah, your scene uh, when you press the bind button so 4 is a good number I just press bind now and if everything worked correct then I should switch that back to wire so that we can see it and then everything should move together and you see it works perfectly no issues at all everything sticks together now the only thing we need to do is to rig the cage so that the armature actually um, deforms the cage and the cage deforms the cloth so that everything works in a system again so I go to the second layer where I have um, so this first layer, second layer, I go to second layer where I have the armature and my deformer mesh and I do the same thing so I select the object first then the armature and then I go to automated ways and it looks pretty good already you see the weights are there um, but it's not perfect we have some for example when we move the arm the neck is kind of deforming when we move the legs um, we get we lose volume in the the back here which is also not what we want so we need to fix a few ways here and to make sure that everything is ex ex as expected we also can um, include here the character so that we can see the results right away uh, I was on the wrong object we need to select the cage and go to weight painting and actually I don't want to <coughs> see the character for now so with X mirror selected of course I want to fix this now and I think that this wor um, vortex group has too much influence on the top so I want to reduce that a little bit definitely make sure that you paint through it because um, you want to reduce the weight also on the other side of the object and you should end up with a result like this where there is a very strong crease here and there and you see how you don't lose volume anymore uh, on the first layer you should also get a result like this this crease should be in this area if possible um, let's try to add a little bit again maybe we can fix that or let's undo it and let's try to get some weight back here yeah this looks better so there we have it um, this quick fix here uh, there is one more problem that's very common so when we when you move the legs up like this or it could be the hip you know that's moving we get intersections here and that's also caused by um, this having not enough influence down here because I want the skirt to be more down here it doesn't really need to move all the way with the with the legs um, because of physics and gravity and everything so I want to add some weight in this area for the hip group and make sure it's very smooth because you easily get here a couple of issues when you don't work smooth enough and if you have any 
troubles uh, you can also use the blur tool to actually blur the, the group a little bit and then we also need to reduce the the values on the on the legs vertex group so I go to a low weight and I reduce it over here and to see if I have everything I just move this around for a second if no words are left then everything should work well and now we can check our result let's go back to object mode first layer um, let's see if we have any intersections here it works no issues I can see here yeah looks good in the front maybe we'll have to fix a bit because we get here some intersections <clears throat> but as for the back I think we fix it pretty much so for the front uh, the issue is that we don't have uh, enough influence here probably we'll try to fix that by reducing the influence uh, with the hip group uh, which means that we just do a couple of clicks on here and let's try to blur it a bit more uh, but focus on rather reducing the influence on this lag area so that it really moves with the with the lag bones and for the legs themselves we might need to increase the like the area that it affects on top so I'll go back to draw and add some weight into this direction here which is a bit difficult of when you look at how it is placed but uh, I think we got something useful here we only need to make sure we get rid of this uh, this here because this is accident uh, we created that accidentally uh, let's see if it worked it looks smooth so far we might want to blur the lower area a bit more also here all right let's go back to the first layer and uh, well I wish that would have worked better maybe we still have some the problem is it's already very tight at the beginning we really need to and also you see how it influences the, this back area here so I think the group is still not accurate enough let's work on that a bit more so we need to get rid of the weight over here for sure oh well, that's the virtual that was not what I wanted so reduce the weight over here also here a bit more maybe this lag is influencing the other one this could also be the case which it probably was that was probably the issue because here in the front we really don't have anything left if you ask me um, how about this one so let's check our result quickly and it got a lot better so So that's how you kind of fix these issues. Just wonder why the lag is not going back to its original position. Um, let's see. Let's go back to object mode. All right, now it's good again. Well, for now I'll leave it like that. You know the theory behind it and you can try to fix it and do better. I will continue for now and I'll take a look at that later on when I have more time. So the, the, the spine works very good in my opinion. Usually we don't get many issues here because this is a very easy geometry but the arm causes some trouble and we'll see what we can do over here. I'll go to weight paint mode again and for example the shoulder should not influence this upper area too much because uh, we don't want to deform the neck after all so maybe like this we'll see the result very soon okay and the arm is the same thing basically we don't want to deform too much except for the arm and that's also for this lower area because as you can see this was actually influenced by the arm group 
And you could use a graphic tablet, by the way, but as you can see, you can also do it. So you can also get quite far just with the mouse, as I'm currently using it. Just have to make sure that you are not using a very strong uh, strength here. And you'll have to use the blur tool from time to time to get it right. But there is no reason why you shouldn't be able to use it. Now here we have a bit too much weight again. Let's try to get rid of some of it because this is what the arm is in charge of, this area here. Good. So I think we have resolved that's good. Maybe we don't want to have the weight up here from the chest bone, but that's only a little bit of a detail here. Let's check out our result. And it should work pretty good already. So if you combine, you know, the arm and the shoulder, uh, the result is already quite acceptable at this point. Um, this curve is actually a problem with modeling itself. This is something I will fix a bit. Um, well, we have time, so let me quickly fix that. It looks straight from the front, but I didn't realize that it was actually curved from the side. I actually want this to be straight. Um, Let's use the X mirror. Okay, it doesn't work because it's not perfectly mirrored, apparently. Oh, it's not. Ah, oh, well, let's fix both fix both sides quickly because this doesn't look too good. It's not a lot of work. So sometimes while you rig it, uh, you find issues with your model. Don't hesitate to fix those because uh, when else do you want to do that anyways? Okay, because it made the impression that it was, um, you know, an issue with rigging. <laughs> Looks a bit odd <laughs> at the moment. I'll definitely look at this issue later on again when I have some more time. But this is not what the tutorial is about, so I try to get this done as quickly as I can. Um, we can still try to optimize this a bit more because it still influences this neck area too much in my opinion. So let's get rid of some more color here. And if it's true, then this should not affect the neck too much anymore. Just a tiny bit, which is all right. And the neck works pretty good. Um, I would say that's good enough for us. And do we have anything left? Um, if I'm not wrong, then actually we finished the like the main ring part. So if you move the entire character, um, you have no problems. By the way, here's a quick advice. In this tab over here, um, for some reason I'm in the Blender game mode. I changed that earlier, I think. Go back to Blender Render, then you have the sim Simplify tool here. And that just disables the the modifier, the subdivision surface modifier. It's just one object, so you could actually also just dis disable it over here. But then everything is way smoother and you can, you know, quickly check if everything works good. And you can see the entire character moves with our rig, which means that we have the entire character done to this extent. Great. Pretty happy with the results so far. On the next part, we'll look at um, I will tell you again and give you a quick summary of what changes I made, um, if I'm going to fix something in the meantime. We'll also look at the hair and apply physics to them. And with that, actually, our rigging will be done with maybe a bit more, you know, IK rig for the legs maybe. We can do some technical things, but that I will leave for the next part. Thank you for watching anyways, and I hope you learned something. See you next time.